everybody. Hello and welcome to the Creedcast. This is the review for round seven. My name is Dave and as always, thank you for listening. Uh, we love your support. Um, as we've said always that we would do this whether there was anyone listening or not, but um, it is it is very, very good to hear that people enjoy it, um, get around it and, and support us. Uh, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. Um, just a bit of housekeeping before we get into the review part of this. Um, usually the last the first six weeks of the season, you've heard our preview for the upcoming week at the end of the episode. This week, just keep an eye on your feeds. We're going to do the showdown preview as a separate standalone episode just to kind of split it up a little bit, um, just so we can kind of give that some breathing space, talk about our feelings on the rivalry, um, basically just shit, shit on the crows for, for a little bit, which will be fun. So keep an eye on that. And whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify app or whatever you listen to, just keep an eye out for the separate um, preview on the feed. We're recording them at the same time, but I'm going to do, release them separately to keep it, um, give them their own breathing space. Anyway, back to the pre, uh, review. Uh, your Port Adelaide Footy Club moved to five and two on the season uh, with a gutsy, gritty, kind of hard-fought win. Um, that kind of um, really um, not wanting to go into the all you know the uh, wartime comparisons, but it did kind of seem to epitomise mm-hmm. a bit of that ANZAC spirit because we had to um, in a game that injuries uh, an injury toll that is rare to see in an AFL game at the modern level. Just the compounding of of the injuries that were rolling through there at the moment. You might have seen if you followed the Twitter feed on the game during the game, I about lost my mind when once I saw <laughs> when guys just kept on going down. Um, but we found a way to win, which I thought was really, really impressive. Um, Willem Drew took home the Peter Bagco medal for best on ground. Jace Burgoyne announced himself to the world properly. Uh, we've been talking about him for a few weeks here and a lot of Port fans know have been pretty excited about him already, but he took home 10 coaches votes, a perfect 10. Um, but yeah, it was a game, as I said, a bit of sadness with the injury toll. Thoughts out with Sam Powell Pepper uh, for his injury, ACL ruptured. Um, he's done for the season, which is a massive blow for us. But um, thoughts with him. Whee, Jamie, Jesus Christ. Um, there's a lot of emotions out of this game, a lot of good ones, a lot of indifferent ones, a lot of some frustrating ones. Uh, you were there. Um, I heard you cheering for Will and Drew getting that medal all the way over here in Los <laughs> Angeles. The, this... Those tones carried across the Pacific. Um, how was it in the ground uh, watching that uh, very intriguing contest? Medic. Can I get a <laughs> medic? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Dave. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting night of football. That's for sure. Uh, a lot of trepidation coming off the back of a Collingwood loss. <clears throat> Backing ourselves into a corner with poor goal kicking, early doors, and then having to scrap our way to a victory when uh, our rotations were down to nil at one point in time. Um, But overall, pleasing to get the four points and some highlights, some obvious lowlights and uh, a lot to to tuck into in the next little bit. But um, yeah, interesting night. Um, Anzac Day, uh, Anzac Round obviously has another kind of layer to it obviously with the pre-match uh proceedings and yeah obviously those comparisons being drawn and ken even said himself that at three quarter time he used the theme of the round to kind of drum up a bit of extra motivation for the players who yeah um who i think were fairly switched on anyway Mm -hmm. considering uh but just that extra kind of prod in the side by the coach is always helpful to keep everyone on uh even keel and and focused so yeah pretty happy yeah yeah um i actually just looking thinking about the game over the last couple of days before between you know obviously watching live and then um having some breathing space between the game and now when we were recording um, had a big day out and so we were gonna we actually talked about you and I talked about doing this recording last night and I had to message last night a bit like <laughs> Sir Jamie, I am hung over. I cannot do it tonight. Which you behind were behind the you, curtains yeah, stuff yeah. there. <laughs> you, were, you were cognizant of because we weren't we were going originally planned for tonight. You messaged and said, Oh, but when we should do it which I was all for when you messaged me at the time and I was twelve to fifteen beers deep and other substances. Yeah, Dave had a very big night on LA Saturday night. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've uh, come to, so it's, it, there has been some breathing space between the result and now. Um, and I actually yeah. found watching back, uh, I did a lot of my rewatching today cause I tried to do it yesterday. I fell asleep again, hung over, but, um, <laughs> I was actually quite impressed with a lot of what we did. Um, really, really happy with yeah. kind of just, if we, the goal kicking obviously is um, probably first port of call 
but you can compart you can compartment that with a decent performance that gave us the opportunities. It's just frustrating that the end result was bad goal kicking, you know, the one goal's eight one goal eight or whatever we were at at one point. Yeah. We turned that around to even just, you know, five goals three. Um we're already way ahead of the ledger and, and kind of starting to put St Kilda away already. It's our own profligacy in front of goal that kept them in the game and made it kind of the battle it was, which is a sure. concern. It's something we do need to address. Um, but overall, the performance itself, I was actually pretty happy with. I was just wondering if that's kind of how you saw it in the night or how you saw that um, coming back from it when you watched replays or got into the, the post-match stuff. But, um, you know, I was pretty happy with the, the performance overall beyond the goal-kicking to start with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were obviously the dominant team uh, in that first half. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, watching it back, it was only back, you know, reaffirmed by some of the commentary uh, in regards to some of the statistical areas where we were clearly dominating. And mm-hmm. you, anyone with a brain could see that we were clearly the dominant team on the park. And it was all came down to conversion and Again, we talk about expected score a little bit on this podcast because it is one of the more fascinating aspects of football in the modern era. And obviously statistical analysis is at an all-time high mm. and will continue to grow. But um, much like the West Coast game, <laughs> coming up against St. Kilda, who were coming off a pretty embarrassing loss, it was pretty obvious to me early on that as soon as St Kilda lost the ball, their one motive, particularly earlier in the game, uh, when we had a full complement of players, their main goal from a defensive point of view was, all right, we don't have the ball. So let's put absolutely everyone, Mm. if not in the back third, literally in our 50 meter arc. Mm. There was one point where there was probably... Out of 36 players on the field, there was probably 30 players in our forward 50. And when an opposition team is rolling back that quickly and that purposefully, it's no surprise that we're taking some shots from low percentage Mm. conversion areas. Obviously, that's tempered by the fact that players like Todd Marshall and Mitch Georgiatis on the night had some very gettable set shots um but uh i'm just trying to look for it now while i'm padding (laughs) um but i'm pretty sure our expected score on the night was only 10 10 points more than what we actually kicked yeah uh which kind of okay here we here we go our expected score was 91 uh and we scored 81 plus one rush behind Mm. whereas st kilda on the other hand scored 72 from an expected 54 yeah. So again, we seem to be playing teams that are kind of kicking a higher um, than expected six, score. Um, especially in the second half, I think St Kilda kicked six goals. One was there, like from their seven scoring shots in the second half. I'm trying to think if I'm remembering that correctly, but they were very, very accurate in the second half that they didn't have many opportunities. Yeah. Obviously, um, getting some shots yeah. from some better conversion areas, percentage wise, mm. and. I mean, a player like Tim Membry, he's a fantastic kick of the football across his career. He had a nice shot from about 50 metres out. Mm. Um, but, it, I mean, a part of this also goes to the fact that they were flooding so deep in our forward 50, a, a lot like a, a soccer game plan where their kind of MO is flooding back as far as you can to make it hard for the opposition, in this case mm. us, and then their only kind of... Well, not, I wouldn't say only. Again, I'm a nuffy that spectates the football, but it seemed that their main forward strategy was just to fast break and shoot, you know, from the hip off of out of their back line and, and try and get us on the fast break, which granted does work. Yeah. Um, a, in a, a lot, lot of, of cases because of how aggressive we press, but also they gave us no option because they've parked so, <laughs> so many players. Uh, in our forward area. Um, So while our goal kicking left a lot to be desired, particularly in the first quarter, um, from my point of view, there was a lot of 
play being dominated by us in other areas of the game. And, Mm -hmm. you know, at the end of quarter time, there's some people in the crowd going, you know, I hope Ken Hinckley gives him a rock, gives him a rock and whatnot. And, you know, my dad had similar, similar, uh, you know, uh, opinion, but at the end of the day, what do you want the coach to say? Like we, we've dropped a few otherwise gettable marks too in that first mm-hmm. quarter. So it was like, well, what do you want him to say? Kick straight and take a mark. That's literally the two things that we probably let ourselves down. Yeah. The effort was from there. a Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Winning, we're in winning stoppage tackling was fantastic on mm-hmm. the night across the four quarters kick straight, take a few more marks. Like it's literally all we had to clean up. And then in the second quarter, and um, this is where I, I was messaging you, I think on the night or the day after where, yeah, I have a particular set of Port Adelaide members who sit behind me at the football every, every home game. And halfway through the third quarter, just acting like the world was going to cave in and that we were, fucking terrible but at that point in time literally all you can do from quarter time is play the way that you've been playing in general play like contested work and stoppage Mm -hmm. and kick straighter and up until that point we had kicked three goals to one i think it was it's literally all you can do with still half a quarter to go Mm -hmm. and then we ended up kicking five goals one i think to in the second quarter, uh, yeah. maybe they'd kicked a, another one. Uh, they'd banged another one on or two. Um, yeah. But it's li- yeah, you know, like again, I can't imagine a world where I would get out of bed, look at myself in the mirror before match day or what have you, and just go, "I wonder how absolutely fucking negative I can be yeah. <laughs> about my own team when they're mm. clearly the dominant side, albeit without putting the." the frosting on the cake or the cherry on top. Um, but this is the world we live in, right? It's uh, you mentioned some sporting experiences that you've had, but it'd be a fairly cross, a fairly common cross section of football spectatorship. And anyone listening would go, Oh yeah, I've got those people who sit near me as well. And unfortunately that's football. And, but home ground advantage is it's a thing, right? The noise of affirmation um, and Port Adelaide sport is a parochial. Like, I don't know why, if anything, you would want to work to the detriment of that. Mm-hmm. Like there's the happy clappers that obviously, you know, get a bagging on big footy and from the Ken haters group and whatnot, but there's happy clapping. There's being just an absolute fucking idiot, but we're there to support <laughs> And like, yeah, when your team's actually doing pretty well overall, like, just fucking support them, mm. <laughs> like, because it does have a tangible effect. Um, and that's my tangent for the yeah. moment. No, I agree. It's it's when when the effort's not there and all those things, and that's when you can get. But the effort was there. They were tackling <laughs> like we were um, plus twenty one on contested possessions, which as we've talked about a lot, we don't win the contested ball a lot or dominate in that. and But that's a pretty pretty comfortable lead there. Um, 83 tackles to 55, 19 tackles inside 50 to 9. So we had a really good advantage in those areas that we often lament a little bit, even when we're winning. We sometimes, are, you know, we can win with finesse. In bad losses, particularly. Yeah. But yeah, in the bad, especially the Collingwood losses. Um, and when we preview Adelaide later on, those, those were some damning numbers last year as well. But... Um, yeah, it was, it was a game that the effort was there, and I wasn't. I it was just the goal kicking conversion, all those skill things, and you, there's nothing you can do really with your support on the day that is going to change that. That's just going to be um, something that either a, a flick sw- a switch flicks um, for the player on the day, or they just and ironically one of the more lamented players in our team was pretty perfect on the day too in that aspect. So it was just one of those things. But that's while I was watching it, I, I my frustration and was more with the footy gods, really, with the injuries. <laughs> there was nothing that I was... Yeah, worried. yeah, yeah. I it definitely, yeah. I couldn't fault too much about what we were taxing. doing. It was just... Yeah, and there were some skill errors, and we'll get into... When I talk about some of that, when we get into the awards and stuff, I might get into those some of those stats a little bit more, but if, and we can bring it up now too. But there were some skill things here and there, but it wasn't... 
it wasn't too bad. It was just, you know, little things that happened in footy games. But yeah, the effort, I couldn't doubt the effort. Um, and that's what I wanted to see them respond after the Collingwood game, which um, and again, that somewhat comes down to St. Kilda not being the same team as Collingwood, obviously. Although um, St. Kilda beat Collingwood at some point earlier in the season. So fucking, mm, they fucking, did, yeah. Fucking footy, right? Like, who, who... Yeah, the circle of parody will yeah. get com- will be complete soon. Well, <laughs> when North, if North ever win a game. But yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Swings and roundabouts. Exactly. Um, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't fault the 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 efforts there, and I, I had that in my, a lot of my notes that I was writing throughout the game. I was like, "Yeah, this is good. This is." <clears throat> there was a few moments where, I guess, um, looking at the structure around the ground, like occasionally, I think there was a moment where I think SPP and um, Charlie went up. There was a couple of moments in the board fifty where marking contest they kind of outmarked each other rather than an opponent, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it happened in the back line as well with. I think I even have a note, Alia and Asava, 11.25. Whatever that means in my notes, I assume it was 11.25 <laughs> to go in the second quarter or around that mark, they kind of outmarked each other as well and kind of spoiled each other a little bit. So there's little things like that happening. But that, again, I'd rather see two guys going up and spoiling each other rather than no one making a contest, which is kind of what we were complaining about a little bit after. So there a lot of these things were, um, yeah, we still need to clean up some stuff around the ball. But in this game, I couldn't doubt the effort, and that's, kind of what the one thing that you can boo at a football game i'm not a booer or a real believer in any of that stuff but the one thing you can really you know if you want to bronx cheer or whatever you want to do is when effort is really lacking that's when i'll get angry at a football game and 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 get a bit snarky but that wasn't the game for that um and particularly as we mentioned we can get into it now i think once the injuries start happening uh, obviously the league going down is a, a big start to that and then um and then SPP goes out with the ACL and Rosie soon after that. And even towards the end, DBJ was on and off the field a little yeah. bit um, with uh, a little bit hobbled and we were suddenly down to one or no rotations at that point. And that's about the time when I just about blew my top at 4.30 <laughs> in the morning over here and just went, I'm done. I'm done with <laughs> what am I, what am I support? I'm doing not supporting for, but I was just like, why am I investing so much time into a sport that can just do this just like, rip just, your just, heart out just decide to have four injuries in one game to keep like every player that was just like it was like oh there's a captain going down it's there's a great a... unscripted reality tv show football and it's yeah, yeah reality tv for men it, yeah that's why we love it so yeah but yeah that that effort um to close out the game with i mean we're down two rotations for most of the second half um because rosie i think that was early in the second half that he was kind of off the field basically or yeah it was both in the third quarter yeah. pepper so peps and him, rosie went down um and look to be honest i thought key personnel in positions where our injuries were affected actually lifted um in the second half when these things happened Again, watching it on TV, for those people who are watching it on TV, there was a lot in that regard that happened that the t- the telecast just doesn't do it justice. And mm-hmm. I'll, yeah, bring it up for one player in particular a bit later. But, but um, yeah, being at the ground, like, obviously there was concern because you just thought, well, AFL is a tough game and... Although there's a lot of there's a lot of teams in history who've had a shit run with injury within game, and I don't know whether it just activates a different part of your brain or, or whatnot, but yeah, you know, and teams they do what they need to do in the moment. Some teams succumb to it, and sometimes that's unavoidable. But some teams go the other route where they're like, no, we're not going to let this fucking be an excuse. We're going to mm. dig deep and um get, yeah get us over the line i i thought that rosie coming back on was a bit on the nose but also a testament to how much he cares about doing just that mm. getting the team over the line and it was quite obvious that he had no run in oh, his legs yeah. like yeah. it was just a bit yeah. it seemed a bit silly obviously in the telecast and even more obviously at the game it and, and it was like okay well you're trying to protect rotations for a little bit longer, perhaps. Put him in the forward line. Put him in the goal square. Like, yeah. I don't know why they put him back in the middle. And again, it might be a bit of him going, 
No one he fucking might have said, I'm, he might have said I'm good to go. Yeah. And, and you know. With- yeah. And he clearly wasn't. So he got put on the bench and put in a jacket in the end. But yeah, once you saw the, the um, ice going on the Hemi there, it was, uh, yeah. So done. again, for any detractors that he may have, but for a guy to come out with a Hemi complaint and go, nah, I'm, I want to do this for the fucking team, mm-hmm. although it could make the condition worse, like, it still takes a little bit of guts. Like anyone playing any sport, pushing through an injury is is tough and commendable. Um, yeah. Anyone that's even half pinged a hamstring or just strained a hamstring knows how fucking uncomfortable that is. So um, to try and go out and play a professional game of football with with what he was um, dealing with there is um a very yeah as he said very commendable. Yeah, yeah. But just um, if I can just go back on the goal kicking because absolutely this yeah. is the hill that I've chosen to die on this season. We apparently, all, we, all, we all have one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I got into a yet another Twitter discussion with someone who was clearly dying on their hill, uh-huh. and me dying on my hill. And yeah, you just someone just stops replying in the end, and I chose to be that person. <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, I, you know, I'm just looking at some weekend. of the. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially in your state. Um, but um <laughs> yeah, just looking at some of the main offenders, you know, like Mitch Georgiatis kicked one goal four mm. after kicking five straight in two weeks and two two on his first game back. Like one of the guys that sits in my row is just oh his kicking has been fantastic. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> as he shanks one to the left or right, I can't remember which, but um and then just Todd changed. Marshall, yeah. traditionally, and you've brought up the statistics in one of our previous episodes, zero goals, two. Peps, one goal, two. And then the, and then there's, you know, there's just your normal average amount of behinds from mm. all and sundry. It'll be interesting to see. Oh, I think it was one rush before. Um, oh, and the expected, yeah, you said in the expected. It was yeah, one, one expected. Plus one rush, I think. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't remember, yeah. I don't remember so, too many rush behinds in the game. Like it wasn't one of those ones where we were getting them. Nah. Game. Yeah, we just. Pepper don't think there was away. any touched off the boot either. Gone nah. for goal, but like, like Jay Schultz got a workout again mm. in the first quarter, and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to make of it. I obviously don't like. I, I'm of the opinion. There's a that... lot of crystal balling and a lot of this is what will happen if this isn't addressed. But the historical evidence just suggests that, like, if you're winning games, you're winning games, and like a theme of losing games due to poor kicking is just not there. Mm. And uh, when someone's losing an argument and they bring up our record against top four sides, which is totally irrelevant, but gets brought up anyway. I wouldn't, just off of a vibe, I don't remember any of our top flight clashes being lost because of poor kicking. I mean, particularly the yeah. most recent one is Collingwood, where we <laughs> we kicked well, I guess the, I guess the fantastically was... considering, yeah. but it wasn't our goal kicking that lost us the game. And Yeah, I would say the Melbourne, yeah, the Melbourne I just... one, but that was more Melbourne being very very good in us being just just probably able. so Mel- melbourne kicking straight is an we, uncontrollable right well i, I 100% yeah, agree with we, you we were, we were and av- yes we were probably afl average really we uh, had we had a couple of opportunities that mm-hmm. if we had taken in a seven point game we would have been ahead but also two defensive efforts at least which led to goals to melbourne and mm-hmm. we spoke about the umpiring some of the umpiring decisions and the goals off the back if, if yeah. you put them if you want to make it a controllable and say that at least one or two of them was caused by ill discipline, then that's a controllable and mm. that affected the score too. So yeah. 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 No, yeah. no I definitely see what you'd say. It's just, it's, it is. And our boy Charlie kicked four straight. So yeah, this thing is like goal kicking is an epidemic in the, in the AFL. And I think I, you know, the, has, has the um stuff up Twitter account is one that I've, I've barbed with a little bit because I don't always think he, he uh, gets it right, but he did say something I found that wasn't that it's not actually to do with goalkeeping, but he he brought it up because people you know people like to you know roast into glass their memories of what you know nostalgia gives you an entirely different prism of what actually happened. 
And he said, and he just said, like, I don't know whether what stats he had to back this up, but he said, go back and watch, watch games in the eighties or nineties. They were umpired terribly. Like, <laughs> oh, I saw that tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah said, because oh, everyone oh, likes to up. glorify years gone past, yeah. don't they? Yeah, but it's because he basically said you don't have a good view of what's going on because the TV cameras were very, you know, different and a lot, obviously, a lot worse. It's just the technology at the time. You don't have as many good replays. You just don't see the game as well, so you don't notice as much. That goes for goal kicking and general everything because everyone goes, geez, the AFL game was perfect in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. It's like, no, it fucking wasn't. <laughs> like, no. Uh, it was, no. I, you know, I don't. I'm pretty sure it was like a Malcolm Blight or someone even recently said, like, every decade they say that goal kicking is getting worse. Of <laughs> like, <laughs> it's been, yeah, it was not umpiring yeah. goal kicking. Like, you know, yeah. yeah, it's just been a constant. Like, I'm pretty sure the Crows won a grand final because their opposition didn't kick straight like eight, eight goals you know, 20 eight goals 22 i think north melbourne kicked in that, grand that final. you know everyone was such a better kick yeah and they had fucking Wayne um, going back a ways yeah it's yeah. just um unless there was a consistent theme and we found ourselves in the bottom part of the ladder because yeah. we couldn't kick straight like i don't like i, can vote I wish jay jay schultz every possible like all the all the luck in the world and i hope he has a fantastic life but he, he's getting a fair workout i just i just think there's bigger fish to fry yeah and look if the club wanted to bring him as a as a consult as a consultant or whatever people want them to do in the club and the, him came to an agreement i'd have no qualms with it whatsoever that's their prerogative if they want to do that but i don't sit there and like everyone that does this thing on twitter and goes this is going to fix the problems. No, it's not. You're going to, then, <laughs> and then, then what are you going to blame once he's in there for six weeks and it's just more or less the same? You've maybe seen some, and some of the players are going, yeah, no, we've got some, he's taught us some things. But then his whole thing is like, you've got to, you've got to find your way. He's like, my way doesn't work yeah. for everyone. So his, his thing is even, it's more of like a mindfulness training somewhat, as well as just developing, yeah. finding out what works. And it depends you, but, who you believe yeah. in regards to. Jay Schultz, whether he's been asked or not, like, uh, yeah, I've seen I, that he has. And mm. like, now that his business is up and running, like he doesn't want to anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, that could be a rumor and a lie, but yeah, you know, you're like, I've seen that much um, stuff on Twitter. I don't know what to believe on that front. And like, and that's the thing. Yeah. So like, I just don't get into it. Cause I'm just like, we, yes. On the weekend, the kicking was bad from a couple, but the kicking was bad from the two that we probably expect to kick straighter. And the guy that, gets a lot of shit it was the one that was clutch as hell and <laughs> yeah. didn't and couldn't miss and i'll even say like i was going to get into it later but i'll say now his one miss that goes across the face and he completely misses was a pressured kick on the run snap around the body um and he was under pressure he was actually about yeah. to get tackled i thought he was more impeded than what he actually was but yeah 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 <laughs> um, so um there's some pressure on the kick he actually had a shot from 50 plus in the third quarter too but it fell short Oh, um, to okay. a contest I'm so sure. yeah he yeah. actually had six shots on goal <laughs> um but the shots that he had he kind of got under it a little bit mm -hmm. um instead of punching it and yeah Again, it what did you landed. Say? That, was from, that was from 50 odd you said yeah yeah he got, yeah, a, so... he got a free kick <laughs> and um yeah had a shot on goal well um you mentioned that we'll talk uh, charlie will come up again later on so we'll get into that there but as part of the storyline of the game, it was a big thing. The free kicks is one of the little fun conversations I had on Twitter with some fucking single celled organism that decided to get into my mentions that I've never heard of before. <laughs> um, deciding to talk about how hasn't it's, evolved yet. It's yeah, just exactly. clamoring all about yeah. with the rest of the bacteria. <laughs> I don't think there's I think he's just one of those ones that got left behind on the beach when all the all the little fishies were yeah. falling onto the beach. Yeah. Um, Growing legs. Yeah, yeah, he's just like, oh, and why not? Why not developing? It's like, I wonder why. It's because you don't understand anything. Um, but so umpiring came up. I think the free kicks was twenty five to nine in our favor. I will say there was a couple soft ones we got. Like, I like, yeah, it's like there's. But then I'll, I'll also say, Jason Owen Francis almost had his head taken off in the in the eventuality that ended up in the Ollie Wines game sealer. I'll call it. I don't um, remember a lot of this discourse when we beat Essendon and yeah, exactly. We lost right. the free kick count, which was pretty much the opposite way. Like... Twenty to nine, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
my thing I'll say, um, and I'll, I told you um, a couple of days ago in messages, I said, I've got some stats because someone also brought up, and I think they're, they're doing it to try to support St. Kilda's argument. They said, oh, it's been, it's 40 odd to 17 odd in the last two weeks. And I went, oh, so you, okay. I was, that triggered me to go, okay, what were your stats against West Coast then? So West Coast, Western Bulldogs. So they lost the free kick count against the Dogs 21 to 8. So very similar to ours um, in a game that they are also dominated. Western Bulldogs made the Can't complain game. about home ground advantage or anything yeah. there, there either. Yeah, Western Bulldogs dominated on the scoreboard there as well, um, which is the one thing we didn't do, but otherwise. But we won the contested ball 20 by plus 21 in the game against the Dogs. They won by plus 10. Um, uncontested, they uh, overall disposals, um, we won by plus 40-odd. Uh, and against the Dogs, the Dogs won by plus 60-odd against St. Kilda. Um, tackles... We were 83 to 55 in ours. I actually had the one against the dogs, but it's, I might have lost it accidentally out of my notes. I was deleting and moving mm-hmm. things around. But I remember looking but at the they were ahead. The, the yeah, they were up by plus. I don't think it was quite the plus 28 that we were, but about plus 20. You look at a lot of statistical, my, without going through all of them, you can go, I recommend going if you want to extrapolate on it, what I'm saying, go and have a look at the, the games um, between them um, on the AFL website. But my point being, Two games that played in very similar styles that they were outmatched in certain statistical categories and basically we just weren't the pressurizing team. They were a team playing containment conservative footy and they weren't... Mm. They were, when you're playing in a style like Port, which you can, when you're tackling and applying pressure, we can give away free kicks. We were actually pretty clean on that front this, this weekend. I thought it was actually one of the first games of the year that I've really looked at what we were doing and we weren't, you know, a few weeks ago when Pal Pepper came back, he was a, v- a bit overzealous and, and, and gave away a few yeah, yeah. It's know, interesting free points. kicks. And there was a few di- things that we were doing. And this week, I thought, you know, watching it back as well, I was just like, oh, no, we were pretty good overall. Obviously, gave away some free kicks, but a few, there was the push in the back one and the Pal Pepper took that tackle and just pushed him down, which I get why it's free kick now, but it's just, well, it's just one of those ones that, like, it's not like it's a bad free kick to give away. It's just sometimes it happens by, by mm-hmm. applying pressure. And, my overall thing being, I don't think it. I don't think the free kick count is that. Like it's reflective of how the game was played, rather than reflective of any bias. Um, mm. And I thought it was interesting. Um, I think I said to you in messages as well that Ross Lyon, when he was asked about it afterwards, yeah. which you said was classic Ross Lyon. Like who knows if he's actually being. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. If he knew, if he knew, and he was just trying to. He's make a, a pretty point, smart guy. Yeah, if he knew and was actually just trying to make a point that no, I'm not blaming that, but. Either way, he's actually basically saying, "No, we lost the game on our own." It's not why we lost the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, if anyone isn't aware, someone in the post-match press conference asked Ross Lyon about the free kick count, and they and they told him that they said it's twenty-five to nine, and Ross Lyon kind of looked at him and went, "Which way was it?" Like, like he didn't even know which way (laughs) way it was. Um, And they said, "Oh, it was you know um, against you and." And he said, well, that's not why we lost the game. Um, you know, it's, it's just not why. Like, there's a lot of things we did wrong and, and the free kick count had nothing to do with it. So he, you know. Yeah, you he, was in, have... um, he was in good form, Ross, in his yeah. post-match presser. Yeah. Ken was as well, by the way, when <laughs> he got in there. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just calling oh, out. We can't, we can't say that. Can't say that. <laughs> Ken has a bad presser every week. Yeah. Oh god! No, yeah. Well, I think it was helped because they both of them had such a long conversation after the game. It was like a little bit of intrigue there. Mm. Um, like, mm, what do coaches talk about? And he's like, "Yeah, we were teammates thirty years ago, <laughs> yeah. forty years ago, <laughs> and we have a bit to talk about." Yeah. Um, yeah, but are. yeah, it's funny. Um, straight after the game, like I wrote a note for myself. Just it purely says, "Was Charlie getting free kicks?" Because <laughs> I did want to bring up that one, uh, the the Dougal one later in the game. Yeah, I think. And I was just like, I yeah, think just he Dougal... had the. I was. <laughs> I was like, is this what it feels like? Is this what it feels like to be Tom Hawkins? <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and for so long, poor supporters are like, ah, oh, fucking Charlie, always getting manhandled and mm. never getting any reward for it. And you know, there's been a few little, there's been a few little seeds planted. You know, Ken. Mm. throughout the year in one of his press conferences about Charlie and that blow up in the Fremantle game that we thought yeah. was highly entertaining. But um, to continue on uh, with your point though, too, is I thought there was a lot of instances that St. Kilda showed a fair bit of ill discipline or a sloppy mm-hmm. 
sloppy in contests and it was like you have no one else to blame really but yourself mm. a few normal footy free kicks you know like taking it on and getting done holding the ball like again that's your fault but yeah after watching the replay i was like you just a bit you bit ill-disciplined that's why you're giving up free kicks like mm. um but also something that I didn't really or couldn't really pick up at the ground at the ground live. And I wrote myself a note after watching the replay was that I feel like we used a bit of the free kick dark arts a little bit. I think we um, kind of, there was moments where we exaggerated a little bit of contact or just got ourselves into positions that made it hard for the umpire not to give a free kick. And mm-hmm. Uh, just like yeah there's just a few instances where i was like oh okay like we're just getting a bit dirty because i you know there, there would be that battle particularly from a coach coaching philosophy down like whether you want to be that that club or you know mm-hmm. have that group of players who build a reputation for playing for free kicks and whatnot and there's I guess there's playing for free kicks and exaggerating contact, uh, contact mm. I guess you could say, which is a little bit different. Um, so many people do it in the AFL and I'm kind of, after watching the replay particularly, it's just kind of like, well, fuck off. Like if it, if it gives us a bit of an edge, like, yeah. and we're the ones succumbing to it, sometimes as well by opposition teams like why wouldn't you just you just putting yourself on a level playing field across the board a little bit like mm. why wouldn't you exaggerate a little bit more contact like that contest with Dougal and Charlie like there might not have been much in it but as far as I'm concerned it's reparations for <laughs> all the ones that have been missed <laughs> over the over the weeks and months and years like yeah yeah, we might have exaggerated contact a little bit, but yeah, there's still a little bit of a hold there on old yeah. Dougal. And... Well, even that one, I think they just kind of just had hands on each other a little bit and they were just kind of battling. I don't think it was even anything. When I watched yeah. it back, I thought it was just like Charlie wasn't really actually <clears throat> exaggerating anything. He was just kind of, he was probably just, Charlie was just frustrated because he deals with it every week and he's just batting away and like moving mm. his body a little bit to try to get away from it. And then he just gets it because Dougal was just towed up all night, which was fun to watch. Um not yeah, and against him, but it's just like I, I do enjoy when you know, a lot of our list management decisions have been vindicated over the last few years. Well, um, yeah, and yeah, that and, was and that one was a real. I was watching on the night. I was like, Jesus Christ, we fucking. It's an interesting did well focal out of that point. Mm. Yeah, because obviously when our defensive stocks all of a sudden became quite low, it was like, oh, you know, we'd love a Dougal right now that we traded away and ended up fucking getting Mitch Georgiatis anyway. I'm pretty mm. sure. Um. Yeah, there's a reason why they were happy to see Dougal move on. And yeah, like you said, I'm pretty sure it's been vindicated now. From my point of view, Dougal was a fantastic spoiler of the football, but I think they wanted him to mark more. Um, yeah. And he didn't, or he wouldn't. Um, and yeah, I think fantastic person, got nothing against him on a personal level, I think. Mm-hmm. He showed a lot of promise and I'd be equally happy if he was still at Port Adelaide. But um, yeah, I think on a large enough sample size, he's shown why he probably wasn't held in as high regard as what some of the sections of our fans mm. do or kind of fantasize about. Um, yeah. But yeah, Charlie gave him a bath. Charlie was hot. like, And again... We get a lot of criticism for kicking the bailout kick to Charlie, but there's a reason. There's a reason why any team with a power forward, you mentioned Tom Hawkins before, Taylor Walker for the Crows. Um, if there's anyone else. I mean, Carlton have two big, tall forwards. Yeah. There's a, like even like Jesse Hogan's having a good run up at They're Jesse Hogan. Yeah, they're yeah. like yeah, take a minute and watch some other football games and mm. you'll notice that if any team is under pressure on center wing, there's generally one kick that they will do and that's a dump kick into the forward 50 to their power forward. But mm. on the night, I was just in my seat and after 
Charlie Dixon had kicked a couple of goals. I was just, any opportunity that we were under pressure, I was just like, kick it to Dixon. <laughs> He's got the hot hand, which he did. Well, and in mm. the end, I think he only took one contested mark. But yeah. It was just when he's in that vein of form, you just like get the ball to get the ball to him. Like mm-hmm. shut up, shut up. To get the ball to him. That's what I found interesting is like how he a few of those marks he took was like him kind of muscling out of a contest and finding some a little bit of space to take a mark or you know, because there was a couple of those marks he took. I think one was like there was a contest out in the pocket and they kind of got snapped in board, you know, to like a centering kick to 35 meters out in front and he kind of just worked his way into a little bit of space and, and took a mark I kind of just dropped into his lap basically and so yeah, yeah it wasn't yeah. like a whole lot of contested marks it was just him smartly playing that power forward role and um finding a little bit of inch of space and 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 then just getting his hands above his head and and, and they yeah. just didn't they just didn't have a body to really go with him in that sense and no yeah. no and, granted and, and, and yeah. his kicking and his kicking was really good you know he kind of kicked the bag and all sorts of ways. Again, I certainly, he, he will come up later on. So, um, but yeah, it was a very, very good Dixon game. I wanted to ask you about um, the, uh, just it's, I guess it's a side note to the game somewhat, but it is, we did lose a lead to a concussion. Um, that tackle and all, and it's, it's suddenly David King is, doesn't protect, want to protect the head as much. It seems he doesn't want him. I've to... got a note here that, Says oh, Higgins protection racket. <laughs> I'm not. If you weren't going to bring not, it up, I definitely was. I'm not sure I'm against it being only one or two weeks. Like that's like I'm just like I get because we did the same thing a few weeks ago when the Sam Pau Pepper thing was like it's there's mitigating factors, but I'm really annoyed that that wasn't we weren't allowed to talk about that at the time because it was like well he chose to bump and I'm like Higgins chose to tackle. Aaliyah has a right to dispose of the ball. If you're going to tackle him, you need to tackle him in a way that doesn't matter what he does to try and dispose the ball. You've got a, you've got a duty of care. That's the whole fucking point to having legal actions in footy. So a bump is something that is legal in footy still. So everyone has a right to bump. You've just got to do it right in the context of the game. Same with tackling. You have to do it right in the context of the game. He tackled Aaliyah. Aaliyah has a right to try to dispose of the ball. Elia uh, has to just dispose. He to has to because otherwise he's going to get. Like, the ball. Like, no, so, it, this, this, he has a right to, but he has to in that situation, <laughs> <laughs> like, or else he's, he's got. Yeah. he's done holding the ball, and and suddenly we're at a point where, um, the, even David King, who a few weeks ago when Zach Butters was let off for um got, trying to contest the ball, for going for the and, ball, and, and his ass hit a guy in the face and. Yeah, um, he left a skid mark on Bailey Banfield's and, nose. Yeah, exactly. Um, David King said, "I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. We, what, what, what are we doing here? Yeah, what are we it's doing? Like, yeah. I am, I am dying on this hill. This is what I care about." And then two fucking weeks later, yeah, he's like, oh, he's like, oh, but yeah, you know, he's, it's just an accident. Yeah, there's a mitigating factor. Fuck right? off. Yeah, I'm sick like, of it. I don't fucking get what I love. I absolutely respect Kingy for having that attitude towards concussions. Like, yes, Not even just him, be... though. No. Yeah, it's, it's some other people, and you're just like John. Are Rouse... we watching the same vision here? John Ralph's tweet that he said, "Oh, think about the poor doctor and the decision he would have had to make." He's probably yeah I, on the telecast. You mean? Oh no, it was a, it was a tweet. He I don't know. Oh, tweet because he said, "Oh, because I think that I watched a little he, bit he of the post match, the and they, though, I think yeah. they went to him on Fox Two, and he was like, "Yeah, you know." Port Doctor would have pr- probably subbed a Lear off even if he did pass the scat test because of blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, shut the fuck up. So, like, so, two, so a year later, we're calling to question like this doctor that's already had his fucking ass handed to him. Um, why, why? <laughs> He's got a pretty good record over a long period of time yeah, as well. So, But am I, like, am I taking crazy pills or did Ryan Burton not go for three weeks for the exact same thing last year? Yes. Yeah, there like, was that. Yeah. And, and I don't Ross remember. Just, took it. Like, Ryan it Burton tackled Jamie Elliott. Jamie mm-hmm. Elliott kicked the ball in midair, which accentuated the impact. But I don't remember all and sundry jumping out of the woodwork to say, oh, Ryan Burton's a bit unlucky. Like, yeah, mitigating you know, like, there's oh, extenuating. Yeah. Set. Like, that, none of that fucking shit happened. Mm-hmm. Last year, he just got three weeks, and it was basically like that's it. Yep, yep, yep. You chose to tackle. But as well as that is in the vision, Aaliyah doesn't choose to kick it until his head's already <laughs> like 
the, the tackle, the tackle heading is in the in, direction of the ground. The tackle's in motion, like, and his arm he's is ha- he's half high. Uh, he's at least horizontal. Higgins has one arm pulling him down to the ground. Mm. He's at least horizontal, if not just below his head. That is before he chooses to try and kick the ball. Like because the dangerous that tackle was already in motion. Mm-hmm. So all of this other shit about Alia kicking the ball and yeah, it, accentuating the impact. Like it doesn't fucking matter. Like what is what is going on, Dave? What is going on? Again, it is it is, and I hate doing it because Higgins like will not... challenge and yeah, good yeah. luck. It might get brought down to two, but what the fuck is all this crap about? Yeah. Like, well, that was uh... yeah. Was it 360? I, I think I watched a bit where Robbo was talking, and Robbo, um, I can give or take it these these days, but um, he did bring up something. He said because I think he said like if they challenge it, like I don't know if there's leniency within their grading and however it's like he'll either get off or like I don't know if that's true. I don't have an in depth knowledge of how the tribe. Well, if they do, it fucking changes all the goddamn. Time. Yeah, yeah. Well, if um, Charlie Cameron got out for, uh, yeah, he got just been his good sentence got reduced for. What's the name? Was it extenuating circumstances or whatnot? Um, Charlie, there was Charlie, a name for it. Charlie Cameron was, they... was because of his good record. Yeah, but there was like a oh. there was like a term that they used that they have like it's like a lever that they can pull okay. as a tribunal and um like I mean, so I, sure I they could this stuff more myself because I do I I think I do need to get a handle around even if I don't agree with it I just need to understand how it works. Yeah, so yeah. Like so look. But, yeah. If they go oh Higgins like we know the metric and the metric says 3 weeks but we believe there's considerable and extenuating circumstances however it's phrased like we're going to reduce the term down to 2 weeks. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't I don't mind if it goes to 2 weeks. Even one he just needs to have a suspension. That's all like that's all my He's still perform yeah, he still yeah. performed a dangerous tackle. Yeah, That's what was. blows my mind. Is he, he pinned he was, an arm and they're like, oh, the head. weight difference, the weight difference. Like, it's not he's not tackling Charlie Dixon. He's tackling Aaliyah, who's yeah. quite a slender man. And all of this, none none of it matters. He had and one arm. Aaliyah's head was already traveling towards the ground. End of like yeah. and weight difference. <laughs> whether he kicked it or not, his head yeah. was still going into the ground. It's ridiculous. It blows my up, mind when they bring up like size difference and stuff because it never works for when you know one of the a ruckman clumsily pole axes a, a player that's like six <laughs> foot, you know, six foot even. Yeah. Like, you know, if they yeah. go in and swing the arm and try to spoil and accidentally collect him in the head because they're so much taller, and like, it's like, well, no, that, that was careless act. And but so it doesn't work there. It's just, just when, yeah, it, and I hate doing it, but it does feel a little bit, it is, it is unfortunately a league that is very. Victorian centric, like the media and everything is very centered in Victoria, and their storylines come from that. Their their prism for looking at the entire AFL comes from a lens of Victoria out. So when a player from outside of that prism come it has an issue like an Ilya, because if it was if you flip the script and go, and you know St Kilda might be one of the small. I don't mean this as a um, as a derogatory to St Kilda. It is they just are probably on the smaller side of the hierarchy of Victorian clubs. But say if it was... They're lucky to be around in a yeah, professional if ta- competition. if we're talking about... Um, I'm trying to think of a comparative... If we're talking about, like, Willy Rioli taking Darcy Cameron uh, Darcy Cameron to the ground like that, this argument is... Or happening. Darcy it, Moore. Sorry, Darcy Moore is who I'm thinking of, but um, there is a Darcy Cameron playing for Collingwood as well, isn't there? That's a ruckman? Correct. Yes. Yeah, he's yeah. a ruckman. <laughs> fucking, Dar- fucking tall Darcy's at that Darcy's. Team. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, I was I was thinking of Darcy Morlow, like you know, small forward on yeah. a on darling a, of the AFL, yeah, captain so if, of one of the biggest clubs. So if Willie Rioli took Darcy Moore down that way, that mm-hmm. we wouldn't even be talking about this. It, yeah, it would be maybe four fans would be saying, oh, maybe reduced, but there wouldn't be a, yeah, extenuating circumstances. Yeah, like there was, it wouldn't. I don't think like you said need... with SPP, there was extenuating yeah. circumstances to but the we're impact. All, we're, we're all told but... we're, we're all told to shut shut up and and start caring about yeah. concussions because we're all a bunch of like troglodytes. That's what we heard. But apparently, <laughs> yeah. the other way we're a bunch we? of single celled organisms. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I found that one an interesting one, and the and the the fallout. And I guess that's is that happening tonight as we're probably recording or later. Yeah, on yeah. Record? Tuesday. So, yeah. 
at the time of recording. David Zeta what's... and his schnitz. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, Zeta. He's he does he's he's a fun follow. Um, but yeah, yeah. so at, at time of recording, we don't know what's going to happen there, and and obviously, again, it's that doesn't actually have any material effect on us. Um, Ed Moore is just a wider AFL storyline as to because we talked about this earlier in the season that at some point this year, uh, all this care for the head stuff is going to come to a head because there's going to be a situation where suddenly it goes the other way. And yeah, we, you know, earlier in the year, we're getting, you know, Webster obviously and deservedly got a heavy suspension. SPP got four weeks. Oh yeah. Um, But now we're at a point where the AFL media is somewhat arguing for a reduction to a three week. Yeah. Ban. The um, dynamic nature of the, uh, the way the AFL is being played is all of a sudden bringing up all these different scenarios, which <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but oh, I'm, totally surprised by that <laughs> yeah well, yeah no it's a just, sarcasm here did we did we almost did we almost predict this at the start of the year i'm pretty sure i think that's what we, our main concern was out of our, every man and his dog could have predicted yeah, it I because the afl would. is imperfect and that's the beauty of it it's yeah yeah it's dynamic and it's a 360 collision based contest based contact sport yeah it was just yeah <laughs> that's why i was happy that michael christian actually came out and said well zach butters is making a play on the ball yeah cool play football you'll get treated mm-hmm. with yeah in the right regard but yeah. yeah um it makes my brain hurt and yeah i've had a few angry moments listening to footy media or watching footy media in regards to this topic yeah, I've had to blows my a, mind. Had to um, and obviously, yeah. off a few tweets myself because, like, we've played St Kilda now. Like, it doesn't affect me whatsoever. Yeah, uh, no. I did actually. I did like Sam Mitchell's comment on AFL 360, where he's like, "Oh yeah, you know, I, it is a little bit unlucky, but I'm not going to say much because we play St Kilda in two weeks." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so playing the game quite well there, Sam mm-hmm. Mitchell. But yeah, yeah, you know, like whether fucking Higgins gets one, two, or three, it doesn't. It doesn't affect me whatsoever and obviously the only thing that does affect me is the fact that Aaliyah is going to miss pretty important game <clears throat> um just yeah just the discourse around it it just has me scratching my head yeah no it definitely I didn't expect I guess I should have expected it but I didn't expect it to I, th- I thought it was a pretty cut and I didn't case. I didn't yeah. ex- expect it yeah, I thought it was it's probably why I'm more angry yeah Especially when we're a team that's been involved in this kind of a similar discussion, even though it was a bump versus a tackle. Yeah. It was a bump that had, yeah, like, as you said, mitigating factors. And it's just like, it feels like we're getting a completely different treatment with the narrative. Yeah, which... a bit of character assassination yeah. along the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like Aaliyah. Like, like, yeah, the... for our I guys. Think, I even think, I don't know who, who said it, but someone was just like, Aaliyah has a responsibility as the ball I was like, fuck. Oh, okay, we're victim blaming. <laughs> Uh, some of those people i'm just like you just want engagement like there's no oh, yeah. other it's rational way right. like you, yeah. know, you, you wanna, say that like you just want to tag the fucking x account that the i mean it's not that i'm a big fan of musk or anything like that but you want to tag their like team and be like this is engagement farming you, you're apparently against <laughs> yeah, this. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah um damn this anything? person yeah <laughs> did you have anything else game specific like uh, just general thoughts before we get in, because I know we'll get into it. Uh, the only other couple of things I'm sure mm-hmm. we'll touch on in the next few segments. So yeah, I'll probably leave it at that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's because I do have a few stats that I want to run over, but I know we're going to get into it, and a few plays and things that, that will just come up naturally. We're talking about some of these things because I'm sure I know where some of these are going. Um, all right, so spotlight, you get to go first on this one. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Um, um, one thing that I mentioned earlier in our wrap up was that the telecast didn't, um, pay justice enough to some of our players lifting when we needed them to. Mm-hmm. Um, so my spotlight is actually a Sava Radigalia, um, being at the ground at, uh, after half time, uh, there was a tangible difference in the way that he, uh, played his football both in relation to the game itself, but the season as a whole. Um, 
it there was quite an obvious lift in his attitude and his performance in the second half. I don't have the quarter by quarter stats here. And again, his stats look very run of the mill for a defensive route. Mm-hmm. Um, although eight contested possessions and still going at 78% efficiency, like the way our defenders are utilizing the ball is fantastic. But the way that he was willing himself to get from contest to contest in the second half, again, the telecast did not do it justice. I mean, you, if you, yeah. Watching the football, no emotion, obviously not not live, but in, in replay, you could see him getting involved. But it didn't, I'll say it again, it didn't do it justice. It was as if, and it kind of paints a picture for the whole start of the season, it was as if he went, oh, I'm big dog now, mm-hmm. right? Like, And it just kind of gave you a little insight into perhaps his mental application while Aaliyah has been there, he's, this is just my point of view. It seems that he's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm the second guy. I'm the new guy and I'm the second guy. So let Aaliyah do Aaliyah things. And I'll just, I'll just, I was actually going to categorize it as Robin turning to Nightwing. <laughs> um, I'm sure you probably get that reference, yes. but um, for those that don't know, obviously Batman's famous psychic because Robin, the initial Robin's name is Dick Grayson, his character's name, and eventually Dick Grayson grows up and he becomes a superhero in his own right, or a, a hero in his own right named Nightwing. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the tangible difference that Aaliyah's unfortunate injury made to radical air, in my mm. opinion, like again, being there live, it was like he puffed his chest out a bit more, and he and yeah, he, he it was as if he's gone, well, the big the number one's gone, so I'm the big dog now, and I've got to marshal the back 50 as the big guy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's no there's no particular moment that I can give you or the listeners, there's no stats that jump out again uh, contested eight out of 14 possessions being contested is a pretty good effort but yeah he had to get down and dirty it, a little bit in that like second half for yeah sure. yeah and i just wonder and, and again it'll be interesting to see how that translates this week at being you know we'll probably bring in a, a tool maybe i don't know we'll discuss that a bit further in our preview but mm. is it a moment that that and we were discussing it, me and me and my family afterwards, and and like my old man agreed with that sentiment that it, it just like it was like flick switched and he kind of yeah lightly lifted like he gained an extra sense of purpose, mm-hmm. and it's really intriguing to see with another week, full four quarters without Aaliyah, how that will translate. But then for the rest of the season, knowing that when the big dog was gone in a leer. This is how I can perform, mm. but I can do that even if a leer is there. And is that going to, is this little experience of being the, the big man, is that going to light a fire? I guess you could say, mm. and drive his season forward maybe at a quicker pace than if Aaliyah was to be there the whole time. And he, he seeming and he would seemingly have that I'm um, the second fiddle kind of attitude. Whereas now it's maybe forced a little bit of change in, in mental um, application. But yeah, I just wanted to spotlight him because for me being there live, um, it was quite obvious to me the the change in attitude. Mm. Um, and again, for everyone who, or, wasn't fortunate enough to be at the game and only watched it on, on TV. But yeah, the telecasts, um, I didn't think showed how much his presence kind of lifted. Um, so yeah, he's my spotlight for this yeah. week. Um, that's really interesting because he's mine too. So that's a, 
show it. And just to, yeah, wow, okay. Um, and <laughs> I thought I, I was a, getting away with a sneaky I had a, one there. No, I had a couple of other. I I did have Charlie written down there as well. Just and, and it's pretty obvious. I love Charlie, and you do too. Fuck like, yeah! This, this podcast is a Charlie Dixon um, stand podcast at some points. Um, but no, I did. I did have <laughs> Rat was my Unashamed. first one down. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do not hide from it. Um, but I had if you if you look at my notes, my quarter four, like I I break it down like I I put one quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and then make my notes after that. My first note of quarter four is radically better as the game went on, question mark? Because that's what my, I was thinking at the start of quarter. I, some, I, again, like you said, I can't point to what – there was a play at the start of the fourth quarter at, at some point that made me put that down because I would just would have been like – he would have done one of those things that you're talking about probably – and he was probably involved in the contest and just was able to get the ball out of there and yeah. keep moving forward somehow or something like that. But th- that was the game that he had. It was – we needed guys to stand up, particularly when the um, injuries went down. There was a few. Um, Boak was one that stood up, I think, actually pretty well. Um, he was pretty gassed at the end, but um, as if I was 35 and having to play a lot more time and rotations were th- taken away from me, I might have been too. Yeah. Um, again, Dixon's another. There was three guys on the field that played more, like 90% or more time on ground. Um, Dixon was 97%. And then... I think Reddick Lear might have been around 95, 96 as well. Yeah, and 94. Then Brand- 94. And then Brandon Zerk Factor, I think, was 94 as well. Or maybe he was 97. But there was three guys. He was 97. He yeah. was 90. Okay, so yeah, I had it back to front. But yeah, there was three guys that played 90 plus percent of the time on ground that probably, um, which they generally do have a lot more time on ground anyway, but um, they had to probably gut out a little bit more with the rotations taken down and probably didn't maybe didn't get a rest here and there that they were expecting with how those went. Um, and they had to gut it out and play some tough footy because it was a tough game all the way through. And um, yeah, as you, yeah, I'm very happy that Radaglia because Radaglia get does get, and I do key in on him a little bit myself just because I've unfortunately when you see the mistake he made in the uh, Melbourne game, it does just make you watch those things more. That's yeah. what happens. You do. You want to watch the good it. things so that you can mentally go, ah, see, see, he, he, yeah. he's good. <laughs> but, you, but then you're also going to. Notice... I think he's been serviceable. For the whole yeah, season, I, like absolutely. he hasn't had a breakout game as such, but yeah, apart from that one or two blemishes in in one game of football, mm. yeah, I haven't been disappointed with his start to the season. Yeah. And I think his athletic, he's been, um, he moves well and and is a complement to our defensive structure. And yeah, um, and in a game without Max King, it probably wasn't the worst game for him to be kind of thrust into that. Yeah, number one position when Aaliyah went down mm-hmm. and again the one game that we've the only game that we've been truly towed up this year was last you know last week against the Collingwood and there was so much happening in that game and and so much easy entry into the fort uh, into our defensive 50 that you can't put that on them so overall I've been pr- beyond that game I've been pretty reasonably happy with how our defense has been Again, you can see there's some little gelling moments that are happening with, um, as I said, mm-hmm. I had a note earlier in there about Alir. I think it was Alir and Asava possibly going up for a mark that kind of, they, you know, they kind of outmarked each other in the end and, and the ball came to ground. I'm not sure if any scoring chance came from for St. Kilda from that, but I, I did have that in my notes as well. But overall, um, you know, that's just, that they'll grow into it and get, get used to it. And maybe, as you said, Asava getting some, clear space for a game and a half here is he's got a chance to kind of get a bit more of a grounding into into his role as well so yeah yeah all right um the one to watch uh on as far as maybe forms questionable a little bit yeah so uh, i've just put todd todd marshall in here um yeah. i'll just say right now we yartsied so um Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> then we, then we might as well just... just do a deep dive, yeah, on the two that we've selected, but... <laughs> just so I can get that... I mean, because, yeah, looking at the rest of the team, like, there's no one really else to, to pick from. Like, there's good, well, even spread of performances mm-hmm. from this game in particular, but Todd Marshall, like... It's funny, though, because on the back of the Collingwood game, I was the one who said, like, you know, a three from George, two from Todd, two from SVP, and we're going, yeah, cool, but... There's just there's still just that little je ne sais quoi that Todd isn't finding at the moment, and mm-hmm. his set shot goal kicking seems to be a bit temperamental. Um, whereas last the last few years you could 
set your watch to it, whereas it's kind of changing from week to week. As I brought up in that little uh, segment, I did a little tangent about goal kicking percentages across their career. His goal kicking percentage across his career at the moment is measurable to Jay Schiltz and a couple of others at the higher higher end of. Yeah, um, I think uh, you know Jay Shields and I think Dunstall was about the same. So, yeah, he's overall in his career, but at the moment he's a little bit, yeah, as you said, wayward. It's just, but I don't really know what it is. One of his shots was from fifty, I think, close to the boundary. So again, yeah. these are your lower percentage shots, but shots that you'd still give Todd a good chance to kick them or you'd have back him mm-hmm. and have belief that he would give it a good crack but um just something seems to be a little bit off i love todd i yeah. think again todd live versus todd on the television chalk and cheese as far as i'm concerned as a spectator that is like you can't truly appreciate what todd brings to our team until you watch a game live and then mm-hmm. once you've had that realization then you can appreciate it on tv but yeah i think he's one of the smartest players we have to be fair um and usually when he's not kicking goals himself he tends to be giving off goals Mm -hmm. but even that didn't happen um four score involvements but no direct goal assists um yeah yeah just it's a bit ho-hum yeah, the start to his season. I don't know his overall goal kicking stats for the year. They'd probably be fairly mid. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, didn't, forward. didn't kick one in this one. He's he kicked a what three or four in one game, but it, it's been up and down. One here, two there, yeah. three in another one. It, yeah, I he's he's not in double digits. That's that's for almost certain in my brain right now. So and and seven weeks in as as one of your key forwards, you're kind of in a team that's playing pretty good footy. You'd hope that he's at least got ten, right? So particularly when Finlayson's been out, Georgiades hasn't is come back into the side later in the um, season as well. Like not wasn't right there from the start. Um, yeah, like you've got guys like Darcy Byrne Jones and 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 Dixon himself even missing a game has still kicked more and. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that was my general. Uh, it's interesting. You kind of your thoughts are very similar to mine. Uh, the just he his confidence seems to be slightly down, which he's very much like that year that he had where he kicked forty odd, forty forty five odd goals, mm-hmm. and a, a very accurate pace. He was just oozing confidence and seen, and leading well and marking very confidently and yeah, and, bodying and his defender bodying, really well too. Yeah, bodying. Finding opportunities, getting involved, as you said, getting involved in the play, even if he's, you know, getting him, you know, if he's dishing off handball, he's, he was very much involved as a as a forward. Um, and this game, he just, he kind of, you just didn't notice him for a lot, large parts. And you want him. That's the thing with Dixon that I appreciate, and that's why I had a note just because I did see some. I can't remember who it was, and it's not again if they're listening. It's not like um because I can't even remember who it was. Someone on Twitter last week, when we were, you know, when we kicked off to the good start against Collingwood, said, "This is why Dixon. This is why Port play better when Dixon's not in the side." And I, was I saw like, that tweet as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my immediate mm. thought out of this game was like, Charlie, when he's fit, is still indispensable to the side because what he does as forward structure and and the targets he brings in, and the fact he can make, he can take a lot of heat and still make an impact. If you know Todd Marshall just doesn't do that, and that's what. You know, the difference is he can go missing. Whereas even that Frio game, when Dixon was really struggling to get, he was still battling away and throwing his body and stuff. He just wasn't getting the, he wasn't getting the rub of the green with whether it be, you know, Pierce was just out, you know, was yeah. playing, playing a really, really good game as a defender. And then that's just what happens sometimes. But Charlie was still banging bodies and trying to make something happen. And at the end of the day... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just trying to impose himself. Yeah, he found a way to kick two goals and, and be uh, in a low-scoring game. So that's just not something I, ex- I see out of Todd at the moment is that kind of... It's not that I think his effort's down. I think it's just his confidence is down. He doesn't know exactly where he's got to be and that like tr- kind of translates yeah, into... Yeah, it's just not all clicking for him at the moment. Yeah, and, th- and I think that's what some people sometimes think he doesn't doesn't 
uh, apply himself, but I think it's actually just he just is very much a, a confidence player, and when his confidence is down, his his positioning and everything doesn't exactly click, and that yeah. kind of makes. Him and he is a bit... very selfless player too. Yeah, he is. Yes. So yeah, whether there's, you know, I'm happy to sit back, um, you know, on a night where Charlie kicks four and. George has five shots on goal while taking, I think it was three contested marks. Mm-hmm. George yeah. Artis. He took some marks. You know, just like, I didn't even know he was in the pack and then he comes down with it. He's there, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. It's been a feature of his first month back, George, mm-hmm. just on a separate note. Yeah, it's been awesome. Just yeah. wish he would have kicked a bit straighter. But yeah, yes. it's, it's, it's is it that essence of Todd going, oh, well, the band's here. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm happy for my teammates to kind of do it, but you still, yeah. I still want him to impose himself a bit more. And you know, if he kicks two goals, zero instead of zero is two. Probably yeah. doing his job, but yeah, just the vibes a little bit off. Yeah, and that's probably what makes it a highlight as well as that. Unfortunately, he missed the missed the few chances he gets, so that makes it a little bit stand out a little bit more, is because we don't aren't seeing much else apart from that. So. Yeah, I'll yeah, love him, but yeah, just want to see him. Like, then it's partly because a lot when he's when he's playing his best, our team really gets around him, and then he's very a very much a popular bloke. So I do want to see him um, get back to that kind of smooth Todd Marshall because he's yeah yeah when yeah. he's confident, I get what he's saying. one of the best kicks in the he's yeah, he's one of the best kicks in the league when he's when he's confident in his in, in himself. So yeah, all right, goal of the week. There was a few good ones in this one in this game. I was pretty. It was a bit of a tough one to. Uh, it wasn't too tough to find my couple to throw into the mix for um, what we've got. But <laughs> you get to go first on this one, so I, I will find out which one I'm going with based on what you give me first here. Um, yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah test the the voting heartstrings a little bit. I think. Um, yeah, look, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you the. The one I think that you want to choose, but I'm going to go with uh, Wines, the winner. Born Francis ripped in a tackle. Wines with a snap, and there's your game. High ball, and Born Francis working hard. Wines ends up with the footy, and a pressure relieving goal. One's red. Obviously, eventually being the goal that seals the deal kind of thing, but we had to scrap, particularly a mention to JHF, his effort to get the ball out mm-hmm. to Wines as well was immense. Um, but yeah, you know, just after toiling away for a half of football, having to dig deep, having to scrap our way to get that goal. And then for Wines, who... I think had a fantastic game, to be honest. Yeah, um, and I another agree. one of those people who lifted when mm-hmm. the captain went down. Um and cop some criticism from yours truly after his game against Collingwood. He to see him do it, and he's done across his career, he's had a few of those snap goals that kind of come at opportune moments and have been pretty important. And that just adds to that um mm-hmm. for mine. Um but yeah, it just meant that St Kilda, a team that can't fucking score and purely relying on fast breaks and luck, it just gave us that breathing space to go, oh, there's not that much time left yeah. <laughs> at the ground. And yeah, cool. On you. So yeah. Yeah, because I think it was about Wines three. Is, Wines is goal for me. Yeah, no, that's a good one. That was one of the two I had in my list. And um, yeah, it was that definitely... I mean, just the the um, I mentioned earlier, but Horn Francis should have had a free for high high there as well. Like he's he's there's a clear yeah, but that's a little bit of the dark arts like sprinkled in there. Was like, was he playing for it a little bit? Like, would yeah. that have been a bit lucky? Um, I mean, he he kind of throws it, but he also was moving his body that well to try and get out of it. And but I what I do love is the fact that he took the high contact. He didn't dwell on it. The whistle didn't go, and he just kept on moving with it. Kept yeah. his arms above his head. Hundred percent. Um. I, 
I'm doing it. People that are listening won't know, but I'm just doing like arms above my head, like, <laughs> like a crazy person on YouTube right now. But um, yeah, and he, and keeps, his, keeps his arms above <laughs> and gets the handball out to Ollie and Ollie snaps truly. It was a really, yeah, the whole play um, was beautiful. Um, and yeah, a great goal. And yeah, sealed it, gets a 16 points up with three minutes to go. They do score another one with one minute to go or less, I think at that point, but yeah, yeah it, for all intents and purposes, and had it was it was Zerk a Thatcher mongreled that ball instead of snapping it right into the center square. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah they, a final margin probably would have been sixteen points. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was yeah, and as I think I can't remember who was commentating at the time of the goal, but they said uh, it might have been Brasher actually said that's the game. I think so. Um, yeah, that that was that Ollie snap was what. Um, my nomination for it is uh, a little bit of. I I gotta I gotta let I just gotta go to the candy shop with Willie Rioli on this one. He's gonna Rioli can get on the end of it. Just goes to ground, but the disco shoes will provide Port Adelaide with a much needed goal. Peter, but then Willie the full fifty. You just don't know what he's gonna do. One balk, throws in a second one. He's just so good in that in that area. Oh, you you can work in a phone box, can't he? When he um, took the benefit of an incredible Houston, just Dan Houston, just deciding to unload a torp from them. From yeah, yeah. Just behind. So I'm sick of the ball being down here. <laughs> you deal with it. Houston to drive a barrel. Look at that. The running torp. And just gave it, just gave it enough roost that it was a penetrating kick deep. And because we, we often complain about bombs inside 50, but um, that one was yeah. one of those ones that was actually penetrating. Had a bit more chaos about it. Yeah. And, and Rioli just was able to kind of turn out the back and get his hands on it. He still had a bit of work to do. He had to turn around a couple of defenders and just sold. Candy. Well, he slipped too. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah he <laughs> slips and then had to dance. Yeah, so he's danced, sells a bit of candy twice, I think, because he kind of yeah a couple of times and then finally snaps truly. It's, you know, it's one of those goals that's from, you know, it's what, 20 meters out from probably where he snaps from, but it's all the work that you do to give yourself the opportunity for probably for him at the end of the day, it's probably a relatively easy finish from where he ends up snapping from. But it's all yeah, the work. Absolutely. It's all the work that it's goes work. into it. Yeah, yeah. Opening, and the opening, up. Up, opening up the opportunity for it, and for us fans that are watching, it's just aesthetically beautiful to watch a, a small Willie. Yeah, yeah, Willie. Willie do his thing, and I thought he had a pretty good game. Great game by Willie. Yeah, yeah. He had some pressure moments. Um, yeah, yeah. Some for, almost some of those forward pressure moments that you know those guys sometimes don't get love for. But he had, he was buying some tackles and whatnot, and yeah, he got his got his couple of goals as well. That great mark that he took for his other goal, where he floated across the pack and he tried. <laughs> yeah. He went to Specky, but then no one was. Yeah, yeah he's just so like he, just, like, he kind of had the knees him. ready, and he's just like, oh no, no one's ready. Oh, no, nope, they have backed off. <laughs> Guess I'll just fucking take him. Just fucking take him up. Take him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, two. I mean, it'll be an interesting one because it's two. It's two snaps. It's um yeah, so it'll be yeah it, yeah it yeah. Might just it go is. purely based on um on on who people like better, but I think um yeah, yeah it'll be interesting um how we've sold it. Partic- each of us have sold it for the people listening. Um, but yeah, it would I be- mean those were the like yeah the Houston talk and Willie Willie Magic is what I've written. That was my second one. <laughs> yeah. I didn't actually have another one, although honorable I- mention goes to. I reckon Charlie Dixon snap from the pocket because yeah. it's just sexy. Yeah, um, um, and even Pal Pepper snapped one from forty five out, like in a like fair bit of distance um, earlier. In the game. Yeah, um, yeah. Geez, Stuff even, we love about Peps that yeah. unfortunately not going to be able to see for the rest of the season. Yeah, and unfortunately, yeah, that is disappointing because he's yeah he was starting to come into it. I thought he was starting to get back to some of that good Peps form. He was applying pressure and. All those Absolutely. things. Um, even um, another, just one more honorable mention before we get into the Sweeney. Um, I thought that, that Rosie's finish for the first goal after Dixon applied a little bit and got the turnover there. Um, <laughs> yeah. By the way, Dixon does more than just uh, kick goals or miss them, depending on your uh, on your um, love for Charlie Dixon. But yeah, no, he applied that pressure and got the got the turnover there. And St Kilda tried to, as they did often in this game, um, tried to bite up more they could they could chew going inboard. Uh, yeah, and butter, uh, butters. Um, Rosie finished it off with a good goal from yeah, goal from just inside the class. Yeah, all right, the Sweeney. Um, I get to go first in this one. This is a tough Shoot. one. Um, but I am going with probably some low hanging fruit. But I've got it called the 
Burgoyne hot minute, and I'm kind of, maybe I'm cheating a little Oy, bit. Oi, okay. But he, so it, it's he had that little moment um, late in the fourth, obviously, where um, he's there's the ball's being kicked out to kind of um, the half back flank um, in the like uh, on along the boundary there, um, and it's against what's the player's name's Hasty. Yeah, that was yeah. their sub. Yes, yeah. yeah. And he's kind of outworked him and, and, and just tapped it forward and, and until he can gather possession and kind of worked around him. And then got a kick in board, um, I think to Horn Francis, uh, yeah. to some, some midfield work there. Radical air out to a genuine one-on-one. Burgoyne and Hasty. Burgoyne does him. Turns him a little inside out to work. That ends up going down the ground um, and ends up in that Charlie snap that goes across the face for an out in the full. As that as that play is developing, you see after Burgoyne's kicked that one in, he's he's just slow, just jogging down the field, following the play. And as um, as, I hate doing it because I actually I always liked I didn't mind Riley Bonner when he was a poor player, but Riley Bonner takes the kick, um, tries to exit does, the, exit the yeah. defensive fifty. Do they want to be hasty? And have to come from behind. Burgoyne important. He's had some big moments here, Burgoyne, in the last couple of minutes. Young player. And now he's going to slow it right down. One more shuts the gate. And is that the is contested it? mark? Yeah, the Jace Berg when he, he gets, yeah, in, front, yeah. gets in front of gets in front of, gets in front of Hasty gets in front of Hasty again, takes the mark and he kicks the one in he kicks in again for the contest that eventuates in the uh volley snap. Um and all that happened in about forty five seconds, basically. I think it was uh, of game time, sorry. It was about <laughs> From when he gathers the ball on that halfback flank and gets it in for that first chance, and then eventually takes the mark and gets it back in, um, and then basically hit, it was Jay's Burgoyne twice involved in making yeah, sure yeah. We, making sure he got that sealer. And I just had to, I was trying to pick one moment or the other, and then when I watched it back, I was like, this, this forty seconds of game time between the two things, and I was just like, it's just that moment together. I thought I was just like, not nah, Burgoyne hot minute. It's slightly cheating, I think, but. I'm going to take it because let's just give Jason, yeah. Well, Jason I mean, flowers for the moment. it was a bit of a Sweeney at the ground too because tensions were still a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. It was still digging out the like digging in and grinding out the win. Like yeah. there was moments where it was just like, oh fuck, if this goes the other way, like they could, you know, they could put some scoreboard pressure on, and mm-hmm. it's going to get hard. Like got no rotations, but yeah, just the. Yeah, those some of those moments in that last quarter, in particular, you just like, oh. and particularly because it was him, mm-hmm. and everyone was like, "God, he's been involved!" Like, and yeah, and he does that, and everyone's like, "Yes, yeah, more." <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, honorable mention goes to, um, so there was a center center bounce. Horn Francis gets it in the air and handballs, and I don't want to hear any different. He handballs it to Butters, <laughs> who explodes out of the stoppage and runs past, I think, maybe 50 people, give or take 45. Um, explodes forward and then just tempers himself and kicks a uh, changes the angle, kicks an inside 50 to DBJ, who marked and had a shot on goal. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't kick, but... That was just a sexy piece of play. Um, that one. But yeah. what I'm actually going to select is in the fourth quarter, Saints were pressing forward. And um you have to correct me if I'm wrong, or I'd have to go back and watch the vision, but I'm pretty sure if it got over the back, Saints were pretty well set up to have a shot on goal. But Zerk Thatcher was basically running back with the fly of the ball and had his back to the footy but just turned in the right amount of time to affect what I think was a half-spoil, half-falcon. Membry. Awesome by Zerk Thatcher. Somehow... A lot of jacks. Eight of their last 11 best and fairest have all been won by jacks. And it's on here. Um, <laughs> I think I have a vague memory of what you're talking but about. But basically, maybe. it was on the margins where he could have almost given away front-on contact, free kick, but he just turned in the nick of time to affect that we'll call it a spoil on the ball. And then it like it 
instead of being marked by the St. Kilda player and then overlapping into their 50, because it was on the halfback flank, our halfback flank, mm-hmm. um, I think it trickled out, ended up in a contest, and then, yeah, another stoppage. And yeah, I don't think any, I don't think a St. Kilda got a score from it direct, but, you know, in the direct aftermath of mm-hmm. that. But yeah. a great defensive effort. Uh, we're big on defensive efforts. So, um, yeah, being at the game, it was just like, please, 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 please affect this contest. And he did. He did it legally and, and didn't give up, which is great. Yeah, which I think he's actually, he's been really good with this year as well. Is like his, um, even some of those plays that it's just like, it is really last ditch kind of stuff that he does. Um, he's, he's really, really quite clean in general. Like he finds a way to do it cleanly. And maybe it's just, it's dancing the line, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I have a vague memory of the one you're talking about. I'll have to go back and find it, but um, for the for the clip, but yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it because I, as as you and I have talked about at times in, on the podcast this year, and uh, with the votes as well, which we'll get into in a, a moment as we wrap this one up. But um, yeah, Zerk Thatcher has been one who's really really been pleasantly surprised with how clean and good he's been, and a real real good plus, like we hoped he would be, but just how quickly he's settled into that back line has been really good so yeah yeah um, amazing yeah and good to see him getting into the um the sweeney sweeney content contention for round seven um all right the votes five uh, at for our um our player of the year voting uh you get to go first in this one sure yeah okay Interesting one. um so to start off with um Oh, honorable mention to Charlie Dixon. Four four goals straight and just mm. such an imposing game. Like probably otherwise just give him a vote. But yeah, I did my votes and unfortunately he didn't make the cut. Um, but I mean, I loved just, his game, I'll obviously. Whisper in here for a second. He's in my votes, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, go people. <laughs> there we go. He doesn't go without. Um but my number one, I've actually got Houston in number one. Um great game. 26 disposals going at 92%. Again, d- defenders' efficiency is amazing. Four inside 50s, three rebounds, 415 meters game. Standard, typical Dan Houston game, 15 pressure acts, six marks. Like, mm. run of the mill Dan Houston game. Don't think it was fantastic, but still in our top five players on the night, I thought did a lot, did a lot right, as you would expect it yeah. at this point in time. Um, obviously had that amazing barrel, which we need to see more of. Well, you can't just oh, do yeah. that now and put it away. We we want to see more barrels from what is it? The center, center was, square. Um, yeah, in the center square, but behind the circle, he was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the defensive end of it. <laughs> we need more of it. Mm-hmm. Um, my two votes goes to JHF. Um, I noticed that Kane Corns brought him up on Footy Classified, and it's basically that vibe, like the guy is just not disturbed by match situation or whatever momentum the opposition has. He is still playing with a vigor that says like, I want to win this fucking game for this team. I don't, Mm. I'm going to do all I possibly can. And, And well, he showed glimpses of this last year, but, he seems to have taken it to another level. He's obviously getting more midfield time this season, but mm. he, he just seems he has such a cool head. And his tank's better. In some He's... pressurized moments. Yeah. And 20 disposals, nine contested, going at 75% too. So yeah. that's a good clip. Six mm. clearances, which I believe was Port's best. Three out of the center, four inside 50s and six marks. Um, yeah, when the going got tough, particularly when Rosie went down, he was definitely one that lifted mm. and um, just some players have an un- intangible effect. Some players have a tangible effect and he seems to have a tangible effect on, on the game. Like you can just watch, you can just see what he wants to do. Like you can just see the effort that he's putting in and mm. it's fantastic. Um, Drew gets my three. Um, Peter Badco medalist, which isn't necessarily a best on ground award, which I think a lot of people it's 
an award. It's like the AFL's most courageous player. Yeah. Um, it's a spirit with a little award. extra salt like and pepper spirit, on it. Spirit award combined with a, a decent <clears> spirit of the like, Anzacs. You have to be pretty close to best on ground, but you have to. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely have to be one of the better players, but yeah. And that's why I felt so bad on twitter right afterwards going like oh burgoyne surely the medalist and then drew got it and i was like well fuck yeah of course <laughs> he does this every week like yeah. 23 disposals 78 percent efficiency which is fantastic for an inside mid 11 contested four inside 50s but um oh i didn't actually see his pressure acts 20 21 pressure acts where is that stat in my write-up <laughs> um, which is third best on ground for poor. Mm. Just everything that you would expect from Willem Durian, like or where, where where I was mentioning Horn Francis is having a tangible kind of like you can see what's going mm. on when he's involved. Drew's doing the some of the yeah, work. untangibles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which you don't really pay much attention to, what, but what, what, what it's it? still happening. Um, you know, the movie The Other Guys, like, Wolf- yeah, 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 there's the other guys, and it's like Willem Drew. Like, this is, I don't, Willem Drew's Will Ferrell. Uh, that's what I was about <laughs> to say. I was like, I was trying to, about to say, I don't mean this is a derogatory way of saying that. <laughs> I love Will Ferrell, yeah, so. oh, yeah, no, I do too, but his character, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, get it on plate, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, um. Uh, my fourth <laughs> moving along, so we can, you know, just sit here and quote the other guys or not. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm my like, four peacock, votes actually goes to fly. <laughs> you can let me fly, yeah, but <laughs> peacocks don't fly. Um, <laughs> my four votes goes to Oliver Wines. Um, like yeah, after I criticized his game against Collingwood, uh, I thought he along with JHF, along with Willem Drew, along with Zach Butters to an extent, although I don't think it was Butters' best game. Mm-hmm. Wines I got some Butters stats. did did the thing that I would have loved him to do against Collingwood, and that was like, well, we're one soldier down, so we're all going to have to fucking lift, and I'm, I'm the senior body in this group. So, like, yeah, I, I, I again... Maybe not reflected as well in the telecast. A bit more obvious there live. I, you know, don't mean to keep banging on about how much better football is live because we all we all know that. Um, mm. but yeah, yeah, it's just like to me, yeah, he he put put a bit more on his back, and that's that's what I expect. That's what I love. And it's what he's built his career on is just doing the dirty work and. 23 disposals, nine of those contested, six scoring uh, score involvements, four inside 50s, 375 metres gain, 28 pressure acts, which was clubhouse leader mm-hmm. um, for poor, nine tackles, 21. Oh, I put Willem's pressure acts in fucking Ollie's, Ollie's line there. There's Willem's pressure acts. We found him. We found him, everyone. <laughs> seven tackles for Ollie Wines and seven marks. He just... Uh, with a maybe a lower end of the disposal rung for Ollie Wines, like still made a huge impact, and then obviously found himself in the right position to kick the sealer at the end. Uh, I just yeah. thought it, and he's had a good season. Like we've spoken about him, he's been in votes. Um, he's getting back to some of his better form. Maybe last week was a symptom of missing two games to injury. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Um, Maybe just a symptom of the fact that that we were just completely torn apart as well. Like we're just gonna yeah. say it like it is. Like it, it was he was yeah not, he was not alone in being seeing the ball going past him. A lot, yeah, so. he had mates. Yeah, yeah. in that regard, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but again, he's one of the more senior heads. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we so, expect them to try to do something. Yeah, yeah. be a leader, and he did five votes. I've already got it written in for you. <laughs> my biggest hell yeah ever. Um, Jace Burgoyne, you could probably make an argument that the Collingwood game was a bit of a breakout game, but this was without a doubt mm-hmm. a breakout game. Like you just watching him rack up the ball, and I tend not to look at my phone a lot. Uh, more t- more statistics throughout the game, 
Yeah, just I just like to watch the, until, I just yeah. like to watch the football and just enjoy. But in the end, it was like fucking he's been around the football a lot tonight. And yeah, 27 disposals, 11 of those contested mm. for such a slightly framed guy. Like he's just doing, he does as much dirty work as he does outside work. Like seven score involvements, five clearances, mm. five inside fifties, 450 meters gain and uh, eight marks as well, yeah. uh, which was near the top. Um Good a real clutch one at the end that ended up in our sealer as i mentioned yeah yeah the one that you made yeah fantastic the crowd loved it um just the situation it was and and yeah and the frame that he has like every little contested thing that he does is emphasized even more and everyone gets Mm. a little bit more of a kick out of it because they're like oh my little my little jace burgoyne you know like um don't hurt yourself but yeah he's just he's living that burgoyne ethos like they mm. just play football the right way don't they and yeah he's carrying that um carrying that torch for his family which is awesome he's been in our spotlight yeah we've spoken about yeah, him he's, he's every game that he's played a lot yeah he's so the votes a lot lately yeah and again another week from from mine that him and jhf are in in the top five best players and they're you know sub 21 um, you know, uh, great signs for the future, and and hopefully, like, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't see him slowing down. He he'll have an off game, I'm sure of it. Um, every yeah. young player does, but every, every game that he's played well. since, yeah. well, sorry, what was that? I was saying every experienced player does as well. It's sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just not yeah, quite that's involved a good point. as much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he came on as the sub at halftime when Bogey went down and every game has been an improvement on the one before it since then. And, um, he's indispensable to where that could end up at the end of the year is really fascinating. Um, the wing is his Mm. to lose at the moment. Um, and it means that he's getting involved in stoppage. He's helping out in defense where he is. He does have experience. He even found himself having a shot on goal, which he should have kicked. That's the, that's the one thing um, he doesn't quite have yet. Yeah, he kind of but... seemed like he not rushed it, but his kind of run up is yeah, yeah. His routine was a little murky for mm-hmm. mine, um, but an otherwise exemplary game from Jason. And particularly, oh, mate, continue. Yeah, I mean, I'll get to. I'll talk to him. I yeah, I guess. It's obvious my, my five five will go to Jace as well. So maybe I'll start off by backing on to what you said and just say, yeah, he's, I think being clutch is a really important thing. It's an intangible that you can't really, you know, measure really. I mean, I, sports analytics in the US do try to do clutch stuff a lot with um, players that shoot, shoot the, shoot the basket. Yeah. In, in the last two minutes of a game and stuff like that, they try to measure it, but it's, it's hard to measure because games are situational sometimes, but he was clean and cool and calm and collected. Even when he took that mark before the the ball went inboard for that um that eventual goal and you know Ollie Sealer, he kind of takes the mark and he does a little hand motion to just settle down. He kind of tries to I think he almost tried to tell the umpire he's going for goal. And the umpire was yeah like, he did yeah hundred percent yeah the umpire was just yeah. like no you're fucking not <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like go on move like it on sixty move meters on. out yeah. kid. <laughs> You're 60 meters out and you are a twig. You're, I don't think you're going for I think is what the umpire was. Like, but Jace is He's just so of, much tougher than like you would assume. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and he had, um, and I think he's, he must have a decent tank on him already because I, I haven't noted that he was 89% time on ground, which is fourth mm, for our team. Yeah. Again, in a game that was completely fucked with rotations and how we were managing yeah. um, our players, you know, tanks on the day was just completely fucked by what we had to deal with um he was um as energetic as anyone down the stretch which was really really important i even put it out in a tweet on the night i said you know jace and jhf um were clutch down the stretch and um yeah it was really yeah cool. so, just yeah. lifting when the team needs it and for yeah, that's yeah for two very young footballers to be it's too amazing late cleaner guys on the night um yeah it was yeah terrible. burgoyne had a lower night in terms of disposal efficiency but that can happen when 
you're getting more of the football and you're getting yourself in more contested situations. Yeah. So, um, not to, yeah, yeah. It's it's clearly like not bad enough to affect an overall excellent game. Yeah, um, so, and just an interesting have, kind of note. Yeah. And especially when you have clean disposals at the crucial time in the game when you need to get, yeah, and trying to, you know, win the game or at least seal the game. Um, that's really important. That's kind of, you know, gets you double points in that sense. In my mind, not that it's a, a measurable thing <laughs> stats wise, but um, yeah, no, anyway, I know what you mean though. Yeah, but back, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. He's five votes. I'll go back to my one now. Um, my one vote goes to Horn Francis. Um, uh, there was a few honorable mentions, as you said. Um, I don't have Houston in my vote, so it was tough to leave him out. Um, there was a couple of moments he 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 dropped a uncontested mark in the full in the defensive fifty that ended up in a St Kilda goal earlier in the game. A few different, a, a missed kick here or there. I can't even remember what points they were. They were kind of, they took me away from just quite getting him in there. But he, he still had one of those games. That he, it was a Dan Houston game. He was just slightly mm. below his standards. His and, yeah, because, and because <laughs> I have a few that yeah. I wanted to fit in there. And I thought Horn Francis, as you mentioned, I'll, I'll rattle through this so we can get to our, um, our next podcast uh, in a few minutes. But yeah, Horn Francis stepped up when he needed to step up. So and to back off of what you said, really good. Two votes, Charlie Dixon. Um, I, I mentioned before I got him in there. I, I just think when you're the power forward in a game like this, in a particular game, it's not like he was kicking four goals in a game that we kicked 20 in. It was a game that we, you know, just yeah. struggled a little bit in front of goal. He did exactly what you need him to do. He was, he was a presence up forward. He kicks four goals, which was essentially truly- the difference in the game. Because what what do we kick? Um, ten goals, sixteen, or whatever it was, or some. If if we don't, if we don't have his four goals, eleven, sixteen, eleven, yeah. sixteen. Sorry, yeah. If we don't have his four goals, we're at seven goals, sixteen, essentially, and losing the game by a few. Um, yeah, you know, obviously, you throw someone else in there. Who knows what happens? It just he he was the difference up front in a game that we did not kick very well. He was perfect, and I will say perfect even by because that I don't take that snap across the body rushed at later in the game as a quintessential child. That was just an opportunity, but that was not mm. his, that's not his bread and butter. So I will not count that against him. Um, so yeah, he, he was great. And um, exactly what we needed him to be three votes, Ollie wines as you've, and, and just really just backing up what you said. <laughs> um, I thought he was actually reasonably clean as well. It's often sometimes the thing with Ollie is like, he burns the ball a little bit sometimes, but I thought he, he was a stereotype. Yeah. Really clean. Um, and to back off, because you know clearly you don't have. Uh, I'll mention quickly. Willem Drew gets my four votes, so he got up a little bit for me. Um, but yeah, he he had a great Willem Drew game again. And yeah, as you said, just um, I thought him. I thought he and Wines and JHF all had to really step up a little bit um, down the stretch as well to manage kind of that different midfield group that we had with Rosie going out. Um, and yeah, like as we know now, with you reading out your votes and me reading out, because Zach Butt is in, is in the best players, and I think got into the coaches' votes. Uh, I think he got four, possibly. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I couldn't get I couldn't get Butters in there for me. I he had a game where, and just I guess we mention it before we log log off here for this podcast. Um, that inboard kick later in the game, I just thought was a big brain oh. fart. That's just not good situation and considering we've just talked about how jace burgo and situational awareness in both situations in my sweeney moment where he worked his way down the field there like you know obviously collected the ball in halfback flank and made a good kick and board um not a dangerous one just got one in um and then again having the presence of mind to try at least to get this the umpire to buy that he's going to take yeah, 30 seconds yeah. off the clock yeah. even if it didn't work he tried um, and he, he he still took 10 to 15 seconds off the clock, um, which is every second's important at that point. Important, yeah. And to, when you, you know, compare that with Butters trying to... And I watched... I actually watched that kick back about five times in a row this morning. I just kept on clicking the minus 15 seconds on my KO mini thing to just to yeah. watch it. And I was like... And I was watching Bobby Hill. I think it was Bobby Hill that came in and cut it's off the kick. It's just a huge me. brain fade and totally unnecessary. It is, especially at that point in the game know the fact that your team is struggling with rotations know that you just need to make a good you know just clean disposal yeah. clean possession and don't hospital hand pass or kick it and that's yeah he just Tom francis is a decent 
contested mark, but that's just but when when because he undercooked just... the kick too. You kind of it just didn't have yeah water, but yeah. It just like floated it in there, and Bobby and Bobby Hill. If you pause it at the point that Butters is taking the kick, he was already making his run because he knows exactly what's happening. So he's telegraphed the kick. Too. Yeah, it's not it's not that classic Butters thing where he's looking away or doing you know Butters when he's at his best he's he's disguising kicks, he's disguising his disposal. And he had a couple of kicks going inside 50 that um, he missed, completely missed as well. He's usually a lot better with. I made mean, no, mm-hmm. he had seven clangers in the game. Um, he's averaging three, 3.3 3 for the season. He has 20, he had 20, yeah, wow. 20 clangers in his first six games. He had seven in this one. So seven. he just, he just did. Yeah. But, so for me, I looked yeah. at that stat afterwards and I, it, cause I tweeted out during the game, I was just like, he was just a bit off. And some strangely like, enough, they some still people... highlighted him on Fox Footy in the post match, yeah, about how good him. he is. And because <laughs> he did, yeah, have a it lot was of... kind of like, yeah, I mean, he he dished he out had some, some good typically he good, was really, yeah, but yeah, like he, my honorable mention in the Sweeney Award was his burst, mm-hmm. much similar to your uh, selection from round one, it was just his burst, and then he had mm-hmm. the presence of mind to pull his kick a little bit. And go the forty-five degrees into the fifty, which ended up in a shot on goal. But yeah, I, I feel that for all the good moments that he had, they unfortunately had just as many that left you kind of scratching your head a little bit. And that emphasized by that moment that you just mentioned, like mm-hmm. as a vice captain, your captain's on the bench. It's a close game. We need to dig in. Like don't don't sell you like yeah. Like, yeah. Teammate out like that, um, yeah. in such a punishing position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I just i if he if he had just been a little bit cleaner, he'd almost have made it into the votes. But yeah, I just had to highlight that because like, he was close. Um, but yeah, I just did. Yeah, yeah. I, I did want to highlight that just for the people that might be listening and thinking, oh, he didn't get because some people might have just looked at the best players and maybe not have noted a few of those things. I mean, like, oh, you don't have butters in there, but yeah, he he's. His mistakes numbers in this game, um, McClangers, as they're officially known, was was well up on what we expect from him. And that's what my eye test that I had on the night told me too. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's about it for this one. I, I'm going to wrap this one up pretty quickly because we're going to, um, as you will be listening, you will hear a separate podcast that we're, when we're previewing uh, the Crows game, the big showdown coming up this weekend. So we'll wrap this one up quickly. But a really good, I think, overall, a really good win. I was really impressed with it. Um, yeah, did what we needed to do. We're on yeah. track where we'd probably everyone would have expected us to be after seven rounds. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, some good food for thought moving forward, and just another experience that the players can keep in the back of their mind. Yeah, particularly winning a game when you're having that much attrition on the injury front. Um, I don't think people. You know, some people may not be aware of just how much that changes how the game is played out when you have that that down in rotations, particularly important players like Aaliyah and Rosie and um, SP, SPP are just all three very, very important players to what we do. So um, it was a unique game, hopefully not one we have to experience too much in that on that front, but um, yeah, one that we, we gutted out really well. Uh, follow on the socials, uh, underscore the creed on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Look for the logo subscribe like review all that sh- all that lovely shit on the um whether it's youtube spotify apple give us five stars if you don't like it then just stay quiet <laughs> move along <laughs> yeah. um but yeah no we appreciate all the interaction all righty we will um yeah keep listening on the feed um it'll be on a separate it'll be in a separate episode but we will be reviewing uh previewing the big showdown coming up on the next episode cheers calm the fucking let's pair. get it See ya. Let's get it. I'm a peacock. You gotta let me fly. <laughs>